Hey, welcome back. In one of my earlier videos titled Looking into two nodes, I discussed about the procedure of computing the input impedance across a pair of nodes through the example of a simple current mirror. You may check that video out in the description below. In today's video, I want to drive that point home by illustrating the concept through the input impedance computation across the gate and drain of a common source amplifier. Additionally, we will look at two simple circuits and compute their gain by inspection. Let's begin with the circuit as shown. What do you think is the gain from the input to the output of this circuit? At first glance, this looks like a common source amplifier and thus it might be tempting to say that the gain is minus GM times RL. That is absolutely incorrect. On a closer inspection, we notice that the potential drop across the load resistor is fixed equal to I times RL and thus the voltage at the output node is fixed. Hence, there is no small signal gain from the input to the output meaning that the gain is zero. Another variant of such a trick question is the following circuit that is disguised as a common source amplifier with source degeneration. Just as the previous circuit, the potential drop across the source resistance is fixed and thus the source acts like a small signal ground. Therefore, the circuit reduces to the regular common source amplifier. Note that there would be some changes due to body effect. However, we can comment that the gain is approximately minus GM times R0. Both of these circuits are quite trivial and can be easily analyzed using the small signal model. However, in an interview, we often try to jump at the solution and end up making these silly errors. Due to these illustrations, I hope you would be more cautious while analyzing such circuits in the future. Before diving into the input impedance calculation, let me share a quick story about the first circuit that we discussed today. I was once designing a differential amplifier that looked something like this. Due to heavy mismatch in the input transistors, the output was terrible. For a brief instance, I thought that why can't I split the differential amplifier into two parts like this, apply the same positive and negative inputs respectively and then take the differential output. Well, now we know why, because we won't get any gain in that case. Alright, let's get to the common source amplifier now. As in a common source amplifier, we have an input signal applied at the gate and the output is observed at the drain. For this illustration, let's assume that the input voltage source has a series resistance of R sig along with it. The problem at hand is to compute the input impedance across the input and the output nodes. In order to do so, we will first short the independent input voltage source. Next, we'll sync and source a current of Ix from the two nodes across which we wish to compute the input impedance. Our goal is simple. It is to find the voltage developed across these two nodes so that we can divide that by Ix and find the equivalent impedance across these two nodes. The Ix current sourced at the gate is constrained to flow through Rsig and thus developing a voltage of Ix times Rsig at the gate. This gate voltage forces the transistor to pull a current of GM times Ix times Rsig. We can apply KCL at the output node and notice that the total current flowing through the load resistor I total is Ix plus GM times Ix times Rsig. That would generate an output voltage of minus I total times R load. Thus, the voltage across the input and the output node is Ix times Rsig plus I total times R load. Dividing this by Ix, we get the input impedance across the gate and drain to be Rsig plus GM Rsig R load plus R load. This expression might ring a bell as it looks just like the output impedance of a two stage cascode. One might also wonder that what if R-sig is assumed to be zero? 
Well, then there is no path for the current to flow and thus the impedance across the gate and drain is infinite. However, that isn't of any physical significance particularly. Moreover, actual voltage sources would have a non-zero series impedance associated with them. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks if you made it so far. See you in the next one. Happy learning.